Okay, I have a great show for you today. I have author, show producer, uh, filmmaker, Eric Metaxas. Eric, thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, it's a joy to be with you. Thank you for having me. So just some background so people know uh, who you are. You have one of my very favorite things on all of the internet. It's called Socrates in the City. You've brought on some of the most incredible, hard to get guests and allowed them to speak for hours. It has been so enlightening and uplifting. Thank you so much for putting those on. Thank you for being aware of it. I, uh, I want to tell your audience, please go to SocratesInTheCity.com. Uh, we have just launched a, a new streaming platform called Socrates Plus with all kinds of other stuff, frankly. Uh, so if you go to SocratesInTheCity.com, you can see it. But it, it's exciting. And thank you for being aware of it. Uh, a, a lot of people haven't heard of it, but a lot of people have heard of it. And I'm just, we're trying to, trying to push it out there. Thank you. Yes, yeah. And also... Uh, your book Bonhoeffer was life changing. It, it made me realize the importance of courage. It made me realize everything that was going on in Nazi Germany, how the Christians were scared, how they were also trying to fight back. Uh, such an incredibly well written book. I, I wanted to thank you for that as well. Well, thanks for saying that. Uh, you know, it's amazing to me because that book, when I wrote it, it was a huge trial for me. And I had no idea that it would be so well received. Honestly, I had no clue. And it ended up selling a million copies uh, and 20, 20 different translations. People around the world have read it, but I had no clue when I was writing it. And it seems impossible for me to avoid the conclusion that God created me to write that book because it speaks to where we are now in a way that I was not aware of when I decided to write it. It's kind of amazing. And the, the new book, Letter to the American Church, and this documentary film, Letter to the American Church, obviously, I never would have written these things if not for the Bonhoeffer book. So it's, it's kind of amazing to me to see God's hand in my career. It's a little uh, stunning when you, when, you, when you look at it, when you recognize it. Yeah. Well, I want to I want to talk about that, but first I want to I want to get your thoughts on something. Uh, I've been covering this Russia Ukraine war situation. I've been covering the the attack on Israel, uh, things heating up between the United States uh, and Iran. Is there any doubt in your mind as you read about these things that they would have likely been avoided had Donald Trump remained in office for another four years? Uh, listen, I think people who hate Donald Trump have come to the, that conclusion. There is no doubt. I, I, you know, I just don't think it's rational uh, to have any other conclusion. Um, Donald Trump projected American strength, uh, and you know his ability to 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 seem a little crazy. You want your leaders to be that way so that your enemies don't know what to think. That they, they just know they better be careful. We're seeing um, the opposite of that in in the current White House. And let's be blunt, it leads to death, it leads to suffering. Um, for whom we vote matters gigantically, gigantically. And when I think of all the people that don't vote or, or are afraid to get political, um, we, I mean, even if you're not even, you're not thinking of yourself, um, but think of your neighbors uh, who are living under the, you know, the current regime. Even if you're not thinking of America, think about people around the world. You just mentioned uh, Israel, um, uh, Ukraine, uh, Taiwan, all of these places where America is matters to them. And we're commanded in scripture to love our neighbors, which means we're supposed to care about these things. This is not, these are not side issues. These are all central. And <clears throat> just because you've teed me up to say it, um, as, as America goes, the world goes. We are, we're chosen by God. We're a bellwether nation. And our leadership and our presence affects the whole world. And inside that, as the American church goes, so America goes. So anybody who says, I'm a Christian, I just want to say God has given you an outrageous responsibility, an outrageous responsibility to live out your faith because it touches the whole world. And you didn't choose yourself, but God chose you. And we have to step up to that. And that's ultimately what Letter to the American Church is about, is about the church being the church in America. Yeah. Um, you believe that America finds itself in a physical and a spiritual war against the left, similar to what the churches in Germany lived through under the Nazi movement. Tell us a little bit more about that. 
Well, you know, when we talk about the Nazis, we have to be clear, we're talking about um, an authoritarian, atheistic worldview, a worldview that says, all we care about is power. Uh, all we care about is winning. We think Christian values and Christian doctrine is for suckers. That's clearly Hitler and the Nazis thought that Christianity was weak, uh, effeminate. Uh, they, they didn't respect it. They were all about power. And, you know, it's kind of a Nietzschean worldview. That's that's the Marxist worldview, right? That's the worldview of people who don't believe in God. You don't need to be a Nazi. You can just be a Marxist or a cultural Marxist. You believe in power. And if you believe in power, you don't believe in right or wrong. And that's ultimately what we're facing now in America. We weren't facing it, you know, even a few decades ago, but it has risen and risen and risen. So we're dealing now, we're not dealing with like Democrats like Tip O'Neill and Jimmy Carter. We're dealing with cultural Marxists, leftists, who reject God, who reject God's values, who reject everything that proceeds from God's values and principles, the American idea of liberty. That's who we're facing um, at the ballot box in our culture. And if the church doesn't recognize this and stand against it because it's afraid to be political, um, that's like saying, I'm not going to take a position on the slave trade, or I'm not going to take a position on slavery. I just want to be neutral. I just want to be a nice guy. If you don't take a position on these moral issues, you're guilty. You're allowing evil to take control. And I wrote a letter to the American church to, to try to wake up those in the church who are not yet awakened, that God has given you a job to do. And when you say that's not my job, you're disagreeing with God. That's biblically the case. Um, and Bonhoeffer, of course, uh, expands on it in Germany. He tries to make the case of the German church. Biblically, it is our job as the church to stand against the evil of the Nazis. Most of the German Christians did not get that in time. They had all kinds of excuses, precisely like many in the American church have today. And I wrote the book, Letter to the American Church, and we've made the film, Letter to the American Church, to try to wake up those who could still be awakened. Um, I know there are folks out there that are trying to figure this out. The, the reason this film is out is to try to help them to process this, to understand you, you have a job to do. You've been missing it, but you don't need to keep missing it. We have a, a very tiny window of opportunity to do something. Yeah. One, one thing that I learned from you in your book that I think is very valuable for my listeners to understand is uh, the, the churches over in Germany, they, they were against this power seeking that Hitler had, this desire to rule the world, but they boiled them slowly like a frog, right? So uh, when they, they would say, hey, you guys are allowed to have church, but next to your paintings of Jesus, you need to have the fewer. You need to have uh, Adolf Hitler. Then as clergymen would become sick, they would say, it's okay, keep going to church. We'll send somebody from Berlin to fill in. And slowly over time, they worked God and Jesus out of the picture. And next thing, the people were basically worshiping the fewer. And, yeah. and so they slowly boiled them. How How is America being slowly boiled today with the cultural wars and, and different things that we're living through? Well, it's it's never the same thing twice. Evil just does whatever works, you know, it will employ whatever it can. So so we're not, um, I mean, the funny thing is that the, the people uh, in America who are in a sense the most guilty of lying down while evil rises, the leftists, uh, they pretend that Donald Trump is Adolf Hitler. <laughs> and I think to myself, because they believe that, because they've got a very obviously abbreviated view of uh, what an authoritarian is or a fascist. They, they, if they don't like you, I guess you're a fascist. They don't understand what actual authoritarianism and fascism is. So, so that gives them an excuse in a sense to do anything. Um, and it, to me, you, you know, you have to see what's in front of you. you. You can't draw a parallel unless it's real. And so when I talk about what happened in Germany uh, in the thirties, you know, there are parallels, but the parallel is not be careful of Christian nationalism, uh, you know, just like Adolf Hitler wanted German nationalism. He actually didn't want German nationalism. He wanted Nazi nationalism. It was like Adolf Hitler's view of Germany. Yes, that was bad, right? But um, George Washington's view of America and the, the view of America of most patriots is a beautiful view of a beautiful nation. And so to equate that, to say that all nationalism is bad, it's just preposterous. I mean, if you don't love America, if you don't understand 
who this nation, uh, what this nation has been, uh, and 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 what God's view of America is, and what George Washington's and Abraham Lincoln's view of America is. You can't possibly celebrate this nation and love this nation. But we're we're living at a time uh, where many in the Christian Church have made this really false, ridiculous uh, doctrine that they've said that patriotism is somehow disloyalty to God. That I'm I'm only a member of the kingdom of heaven. That is nonsense. That's like saying you can only love Jesus. You cannot love your wife. You cannot love your kids. Uh, uh, be careful. That That's crazy. These loves in, are meant to inform each other. Um, and so the idea that my love of, of Jesus would make it impossible for me to love my country. People have died for this country. People have died so that we could be free. We could have this conversation right now without, you know, stormtroopers knocking down the door. I'm probably just saying stormtrooper because you've got a stormtrooper costume behind <laughs> you there in the video. But it's kind of amazing to me how confused many Christians have become. And, and I think that we, we have to, I wrote a book called um, uh, If You Can Keep It about America. And that's when I really understood in writing If You Can Keep It, that God wants us to love our country. And again, not to love our country more than we love God, but to love our country, to cherish uh, what is good about our country. There's something beautiful about that. And there was until recently, most Americans didn't have an idea that patriotism is bad. They all knew it's good and beautiful. Uh, they're always going to be nuts, but they're going to be nuts who love any good thing too much. And so we're living in a strange time right now where the church, many in the church have become very confused on a host of issues. Uh, and uh, in my book, Letter to the American Church, I try to help people understand it's the job of the church uh, to get involved in standing against evil. So part of that evil is just kind of a, a raw globalist, anti-American, anti-nationalist view that says nations are bad. We want to have a one world government. Well, who's going to lead the one world government? It's not going to be George Washington. Uh, it's going to be evil people that don't care about your rights uh, as enshrined in the constitution. Uh, there's something beautiful about a nation uh, if that nation espouses the views or the values or the laws in our constitution. But many in the church today have gotten very confused about this and they're, they're either gone woke or they're leaning woke um, or they're doing nothing as wokeism, cultural Marxism infiltrates the culture, infiltrates the churches. They're doing nothing. They're acting like, well, that's not my job. Let's just preach the gospel. We'll just do church. That's not biblical, folks, and that's uh, that's why I wrote the book letter to the American Church, and that's why we made the film letter to the American Church. The church has to see where we are right now. It's vital. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. You you, know, you point out uh, this one world government. Like, who would really run it? Like, look at the look at what's happening over in Europe, right? So you had these individual countries. Then they say, hey, let's create a union. Then you have somebody over that. Now you have somebody overseeing everything over a block of countries. And you think that power doesn't go to people's heads? Then you have competing factions like the World Economic Forum or the WHO trying to get everybody to sign on that the WHO is now uh, the, the ultimate power when it comes to medical this, information. This is, this is the most amazing thing that we, again, if you do not know what it means to be an American, what it means to be Christian, if you don't understand this, you are a sitting duck. For globalist entities to come in and to wipe you out. And we just saw the whole COVID lunacy where you have forces, government uh, 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 entities that are not allied with American values, with Christian values coming in. And you have many Americans, mostly on the left, saying, come on in and you run our health policy. And you think, are you crazy? There are dark forces out there. The Chinese communists would love to run our health policy. They would love to take us over by any means necessary. If they can use a pandemic, if they can use vaccines, if they can, whatever they can do, it's it's evil. And so I think a lot of people are waking up. The last three years have been a wake up call for tons of people, but there are many Christians that still don't get it or they don't get it enough. They're still going to a church that is turning a blind eye to evil. That says, oh, we're just gonna do church. We, we're, we're not gonna get political. And it's like, well, these are moral issues. And so you don't have to take them all on but you need to go, be going to a church that at least cares that it is the job of the church to stand up against evil, to stand up uh, against corruption uh, of every kind. And, and 
I really think that if you're going to a church like that, that's turning a blind eye to all this kind of stuff that says, we don't want to do that. We just want to do church. You're in danger of judgment. Like get out of that church as soon as possible, because what happened in Germany, I mean, this is the, really the issue. What happened in Germany because of the silence and inaction of the German church is happening now. It's the same thing. The silence of the church led to the death camps. They didn't see it at the time. They didn't know this was coming, but it was their inaction and silence at a time when they could have done something that opened the door so that the Nazis could take over, crush the church, and then do whatever they wanted. That's what's happening right now. And if enough Christians don't speak up and stand up and, and go to churches where they're standing against this stuff, uh, the same thing will happen to us. It's foolish for us to think that it couldn't happen here. It is happening here. Things that we never dreamt of a few years ago are happening now. And I think it's God's mercy to wake us up. Yeah. Well, I've got Dennis Prager coming on in a couple of days to go over this similar topic. But You've, you've got the book that's already out. You've got this documentary. I watched the trailer, or not the trailer, sorry, the teaser, the whole thing. It's beautiful. It's well done. Uh, Eric, how are people going to be able to see that? Where can I point my audience towards? Well, the first thing I would say is that um, it will be available uh, to watch. It's just a few dollars on Epic TV. Uh, so Epic TV, it's Epic, like Epic Times, E-P-O-C-H. Uh, EpicTV.com. February 8th is the official date. So from then on, you can you can see it. But it is being offered free to churches. So any church that wants, wants to sign up for a free screening, totally free, folks, uh, of Letter to the American Church, go to LetterToTheAmericanChurch.com. If you go to LetterToTheAmericanChurch.com, you can see how to sign your church up. Uh, but I think that you know, if you're going to a church that's not interested in a free screening, I want to say, why are you going to that church? Because we are living in, in, in a really an extraordinary hour right now. We only have a small window of opportunity before the forces of evil are essentially going to silence the church. And there are many working outside the church, inside the church to silence the church. There, there are many Christians that are confused or working with dark forces to silence, uh, you know, voices of freedom and truth. And I, and I think that every Christian, it's incumbent on every Christian to, to take this seriously. So it, again, if you're going to a church that doesn't care about this, I would go to another church. I would, I would really take that seriously. Uh, and it, you know, if your church is on the fence, you can have a free screening, letter to the American church.com. There's no strings attached. We just want to get the message out. Okay, great. I'm going to, I'm going to put that down below. Yeah. I, I saw how a lot of these churches got steamrolled uh, during COVID, forced to shut down, told that they were uh, evil for singing. Uh, I mean, the, the way that the government tried to steamroll the American church is just embarrassing. And now it's our turn to stand up, fight back, make our voices heard. And that's why I want to amplify this film and, and get it out there. Uh, Eric, thank you so much for coming on. I'm going to put a link down below to uh, the website as well as where they can go watch it over on Epic TV. Uh, any last words before we we end here? Well, I just think I want to say like it's an amazing film. I didn't make the film. I wrote the book, but the film, the people who made it, they just did an extraordinary job. And I really uh, I, I want to encourage everyone, please see the film. Take your family, take your friends. This is a vital message for our time. I believe God's trying to wake up his church for such a time as this, as we say. Uh, and we, we ought not to miss it. Uh, the Germans missed it. And the horror that ensued when the church misses it is it's just a nightmare. And I, I want to say to anybody who, who thinks of himself or herself as a Christian, please take this seriously and, you know, check it out. Great. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. God bless you, Stephen. Thank you.